Well, let's now shift focus to Kenya, where the government has just reversed a 10-year ban on genetically modified crops in the country. Now, the decision was made during a cabinet meeting chaired by newly elected President William Ruto on Monday. The move means that farmers will now be allowed to cultivate and import food crops and animal feed produced through biotechnological innovation. The country has been reluctant to approve the import or planting of genetically modified food crops since November 2012. And that's amid an ongoing debate about the safety of GMO crops. However, the cabinet does say the decision was reached in accordance with the recommendations of a task force which looked into GMOs and food safety as well as guidelines on all international treaties including the Katanyenga Protocol on Biosafety. Well, let's now take this decision apart with Dr. Margaret Karembu. She's a director at the International Service for the Acquisition of Agri-Biotech Applications. Great to have you uh, with us on the show, Dr. Karembu. Now, of course, your organization, it has been a, a, an advocate for the use of biotechnological interventions uh, in Africa's uh, journey to enhancing food security and also reducing poverty on the continent. So let's start off with your thoughts on this latest decision. Thank you, and uh, we are indeed very happy over the decision by the president, Dr. William Ruto, to lift this ban. Uh, because he has shown that Kenya wants to use evidence, wants to use science, and also appreciating the enormous work that our scientists in Kenya have been doing on uh, research on genetically modified crops. So we are very happy that uh, this decision is going to impact on the, the whole bioeconomy, looking from uh, production to processing and also to trade. Mm. But of course, we can't ignore the fact that this 10-year ban, uh, it was a result of ongoing concerns and debate around the safety of GMO uh, crops in Kenya. Uh, so tell us more about uh, what has happened over the last decade that addresses those concerns. You talked about research. Get, get further into it. So uh, globally, we know that uh, more than 25 uh, years have passed since the first crops were commercialized. And there's enormous evidence to the fact that the concerns on safety, on environment, on social economics have all come to one verdict that GM crops are safe to use for food, for feed, and also for the environment. That is one. Secondly, the, the aspect of social economic impacts, we have seen countries that have adopted GM crops over the years in improving on their productivity, food access, and uh, raising the incomes of farmers growing biotech crops. So, this evidence is, is enormous. And then again, uh, we are signatory to many international protocols. The global, the world is global, it's a global village. Trillions of meals of, of GM crops have been served. And there has not been any evidence to show that there are any risky than traditional crops. And so the record is very clear. And Kenya is now relying on the evidence that, it, that has been generated over two decades plus. Mm. Well, in that case, uh, uh, what, how exactly or how do you expect to see this decision uh, impacting not just Kenya's overall agricultural uh, sector, but also food security uh, and especially its export uh, and import markets going forward? Very good question. Kenya, as you know, is very strategic in the region. It's one of the, the, the transit countries, and we have lost a lot of revenue by our, our cargo being rerouted to other, other ports. And so we are, we are seeing this decision as important, one, in terms of increasing revenue that we are going to collect from uh, others in the region that will be importing and have been importing uh, uh, foods then we are seeing a big opportunity for our farmers to get a new, another tool that they can use to increase productivity and help uh, resolve this uh, very, very sad issue of people dying of hunger because uh, the climate change impacts have resulted into massive uh, crop failure. And so we are, think, we are looking at this technology as key in addressing the, the challenge of climate change, the pests and diseases that have increased because of these changes. And, and very, very importantly, also looking at our young people uh, who are very talented, graduating from bio, biotechnology courses, but they have nothing. We have not had an opportunity to tra transition 
the research that is being conducted in our universities and research institutions into products that society can benefit from that research. And yet, they are the ones who are paying for the research. So there are many opportunities that are going to come by by having an enabling environment for science to thrive. Mm. Well, certainly an exciting time for the agriculture sector in Kenya. Thank you so much, Dr. Karembu, for joining us on the show today. Of course, she is the director at the International Service for the Acquisition of Agri-Biotech Applications.